will make NHL jerseys when the Adidas deal ends in 2024. That is the big question in aesthetic circles these days, and so far, there is no clear answer. That said, I'll do my best to take you through what I know in this video. I don't have a lot of solid information yet, but I'll give you my opinion on the current frontrunners and what I hope to see the NHL do with their next jersey deal. So let's talk about it all right now as Aesthetics presents Adidas Aftermath, who will make NHL jerseys in 2024. As we get underway, here's a shout out to the members of the Aesthetics YouTube channel with a special stick tap to the icons. Thank you all for your tremendous support. Now, let's dig in. July 28, 2022. Greg Wyshynski of ESPN is first to report that Adidas will not renew its deal as the official supplier of NHL uniforms and apparel. The contract expires after the 23-24 season. The league confirms all of this, and they say they are actively seeking a new partner to pick up these rights beginning in 24-25. This does mean the summer of 2024 is shaping up to be a busy one, as jerseys from a new supplier are introduced across the league. More on that later. For now, it's worth noting that this is the first time the NHL's jersey outfitter has been in flux, and that has a lot of fans and collectors worried and wondering about what's to come. But before we get where we're going, we need to understand a little about where we've been. So allow me to take you back a bit. I promise it'll be worth your time. Because NHL jersey production prior to 2005 goes a little beyond my own expertise, I checked in with my friend Andrew Greenstein and his website NHLuniforms.com for some historical perspective. Now, I'm not going all the way back to the days of wool sweaters here. To get enough context, we only need to go back to the 1990s, when the NHL begins to get a little more, let's say, business savvy. They're starting to better understand the value of their product, and player salaries are skyrocketing, creating a need for added revenue streams or a salary cap. This is effectively what the 94 lockout is all about. And by the way, there's no way not to attribute these things to Gary Bettman, who becomes NHL commissioner in 1993. Not to mention, before Bettman, jerseys existed simply to separate one team from another. They were not yet the merchandising powerhouse that they are today. So next time you boo him, just remember we don't have third jerseys without it. The, boo the booing is okay. It just means you're a hockey ready. So anyway, in the early 90s, all NHL jerseys are CCM branded, and in 95, following that lockout shortened season, the smaller market troubles start to boil over, and struggling teams begin to relocate. And when the Nordiques move to Denver, there's finally a breach of the CCM blockade. Starter gets the deal to make Avalanche game jerseys in 1995. Everyone else will remain with CCM until a year later. In 96, eight more teams moved to Starter, and now Nike gets into the action with the Mighty Ducks, Blackhawks, Red Wings, and Flyers. Things are starting to get fractured. Again, this isn't my area of expertise, but the randomness would lead me to believe that teams are making their own deals with jersey suppliers. CCM had the monopoly, but not because they had a deal in place at the league level, not yet anyway. In 97, CCM loses three more teams to Starter and Nike. And when the Nashville Predators expansion team arrives in 98, their jerseys are Bauer branded. And at this time, Bauer is a subsidiary of Nike. The following year, 1999, Nike and Starter get out of the NHL business. But a new competitor arrives on the scene, Pro Player, which ends up outfitting 13 of the 28 teams, putting a real dent in CCM. But CCM catches a break. Pro Player is a division of Fruit of the Loom, which files for bankruptcy about two months into the NHL season. The pro player jerseys remain through the end of the year, and after that, there's only one left standing. May 31st, 2000. The hockey company, owner of the CCM and Coho brands, announces an exclusive licensing agreement with the NHL. Going forward, they will be the sole supplier of jerseys for all 30 teams. With this new arrangement, they want their branding in a more prominent location on the uniforms, so the manufacturer logos shift from the back hem, where no one could see them, to just above the player's name, a spot that's easy for TV cameras to find. Now that's all well and good for the next four seasons. Then, in June 2004, CCM is sold to Reebok, 
And before they can implement any new jersey branding, there's another lockout. And this one is a doozy. The entire season is canceled. When the NHL finally returns in 2005, it's working on big plans with Reebok. At this point in time, the hockey sweater has not seen an upgrade in decades. They're still the same boxy fits with straight line seams that may improve manufacturing efficiencies but pay absolutely no attention to the shape of the humans that wear them. The idea is in its early stages as the 0506 season gets underway, but some specially designed practice jerseys have started popping up across the NHL. At the same time, Reebok is purchased by Adidas, but it's determined that Reebok will continue as the hockey brand while Adidas sticks to soccer. The Reebok Vector logo replaces both the CCM and Coho marks on the neckline of every NHL sweater. The following season, the new jerseys that have been in development are ready for a sneak peek. At the 2007 NHL All-Star Game in Dallas, the Reebok Edge uniform system makes its official debut. As partners, the National Hockey League and Reebok felt that the next way to improve today's game of hockey was to initiate a new uniform project. The main objective is to enhance player performance, at the same time focusing on increasing their protection and safety. As part of a new 10-year deal, all 30 NHL teams will make the switch to Reebok Edge, and for some, it will mean big changes. In the summer of 07, I start a blog to keep track of each new jersey reveal, and this blog will become Aesthetics. Seven teams use this opportunity for a brand refresh. The Bruins, Blue Jackets, Senators, Sharks, Lightning, Canucks, and Capitals all introduce new logos to go with their new uniform system. Now, coming out of the 06-07 season, 18 of the 30 NHL teams have an alternate uniform in active use. As Reebok ramps up a massive factory production schedule, the league is forced to pause its third jersey program, but only for a season. Third jerseys do return in 2008. In the early days, Reebok Edge is not without its flaws. Players find that the feed away technology meant to keep moisture from weighing down the jersey is working a little too well, causing water to pool in their gloves and skates. Reebok Edge 2.0 brings back some traditional fabrics but maintains the form-fitting shape. We fast forward to 2015. As Reebok's 10-year deal with the NHL winds down, the brand is moving in a different direction, away from hockey. In its place, their parent company steps up. On September 15th, the NHL makes the big announcement. We look forward to our new agreement, the one we're announcing today, uh, our long-term partnership with Adidas as the authentic outfitter of on-ice uniforms. Uh, a great time for the newest member of the NHL family to join us as it coincides with our centennial celebration. As the league reaches its 100-year milestone in 2017, the uniform evolves with the Addy Zero jersey from Adidas. In addition to some new materials, the biggest change to the overall look is around the collar, which now lays flat and features a metallic-looking NHL shield right up front. It mirrors the launch of the Edge uniform in two ways. First, third jerseys are paused around the NHL for one season. And second, Addy Zero gets its first look at a special event, outfitting the 2016 World Cup of Hockey. For fans, it's a sneak peek at the future of the NHL. With player performance technology perfected in the decade prior, the Adidas design team focuses on delivering an unprecedented era of visual creativity. They start by developing the brand identity for the first NHL expansion team in 17 years, establishing the Vegas Golden Knights. And they do it all over again a few years later for the Seattle Kraken. Their foray into the All-Star Game introduces colors never before seen on NHL ice. They produce astonishing third jerseys that disregard tired traditions to keep NHL brands moving forward. At the same time, they demonstrate a keen sense of nostalgia with a run of incredible throwback designs, especially those for the Winter Classic. And to top it all off, in late 2020, they launch a league-wide collection that remixes the past in the best way possible, with the massively popular Reverse Retro program. And then they do it all again two years later. In the short time Adidas has been at the helm of NHL uniform design, they have left an indelible mark. They will not be an easy act to follow. And that brings us back to last July. 
As Adidas chooses not to renew its seven-year agreement with the NHL, the league finds itself in need of a new jersey provider going into the 24-25 season. But before we jump ahead to who comes after Adidas, we should give some notice to their final season and what's to come in 23-24. It might be a little early for the 2023 edition of NHL Jersey Watch, but there's already plenty to talk about. As Adidas enters its last year with the NHL, they're not exactly slowing down. We may not get a reverse retro 3.0 or anything, but we do have a lot of new uniforms on the horizon. For example, the NHL has already announced two outdoor games, the Heritage and Winter Classics. Throwback jerseys are where the Adidas team truly shines, so you know they're going to knock these out of the park. Pun intended. And another stadium series is likely coming as well, which means six new sweaters at minimum. And I've previously reported the Kraken will have a new third jersey next year. And it's been rumored the Flyers are considering new home and away uniforms, but don't worry, no changes to that classic logo. Plus, with the next All-Star game in Toronto, they are sure to have something great in store. So even though Adidas is wrapping things up here, you know they're going to go out with a bang. Next season is sure to be a good one. All right, we've covered the past and we've covered the present. So now comes the part of the video where we start to look forward. Where does the NHL go from here? Well, from what I've been told, Adidas tried to negotiate a new deal with the NHL where they'd outfit only a handful of teams, kind of like what we saw back in the 90s. Adidas could take a half dozen teams or so and really focus on making them the best they can be and let someone else pick up the rest. But sadly, the NHL declined that offer. They want to keep things simple, one supplier across the board. The rest of this video is pure speculation on my part, make no mistake about it. I have no specific knowledge about who's pitching the NHL for the rights or who the NHL is considering. I also don't know a lot about the business side of sports apparel, but I've tried to do a bit of research here just for you guys. So we'll go down the list of companies that could be positioned to make a bid and what relationship they have, if any, to the NHL or hockey in general. If you want to know my preference, let's just say this. For me, there are two main concerns. One, I'd like to see the next NHL outfitter be a company for whom hockey will be the priority. As good as Adidas has been, hockey is not their priority. Soccer is. And two, I'm hoping for someone with a track record of creativity in design. Now let's take a closer look at possible options for the NHL's next jersey creator. We'll start with a current NHL partner. Fanatics. When Adidas became the official on-ice outfitter in 2017, they were also licensed to sell authentic jerseys to fans. If you want to save money and go down the replica road, Fanatics is where you turn for their breakaway line. They also run NHLshop.com, which is the league's official online store. Now, by most accounts, Fanatics is a company with cheap and crummy products and even worse, customer service. Now, some believe Fanatics may be looking to get into the on-ice business, outfitting the teams so they can sell the authentic jerseys as well. But given their spotty track record when it comes to quality control, you'd be understandably concerned if the NHL goes down this path. You know, I also don't know that they're even equipped to produce high-performance player apparel. Reebok spent a long time in the lab developing the Edge uniforms, and they still tripped on the start line. So the NHL does not want to get this wrong again. On a related note, some fans have even floated Mitchell and Ness as a possible outfitter. This is an apparel brand known for nostalgia, and it was purchased by Fanatics in 2022. The Philadelphia-based company did provide some baseball and football uniforms in the early 20th century, but now they mostly make throwback merch for fans, including some for the NHL. Their latest collection is the NHL Blue Line jerseys. It's a bit of a mess, if you ask me. From their own published images, the quality looks terrible, on par with their parent company, honestly. To me, they look like cheap knockoffs, and yet they come with a $200 price tag. So, go figure. Starter produced a lot of NHL jerseys in the late 90s until their rapid decline, and while they are still around today, they're no longer in a position to get back into hockey uniform production. But for what it's worth, they are currently an NHL licensee, making their classic windbreakers along with other apparel. Starter's parent company is Iconics International, which owns a wide range of apparel brands, but not much in sports, so I can't see them making a real push. New Era, known mainly for its headwear, is reportedly interested in the NHL jersey contract. The Buffalo-based firm became the official outfitter of the Canadian Football League in 2019. And for what it's worth, they took over from Adidas. New Era is not a big name in hockey, but that would certainly change if they started making NHL jerseys. Now let's quickly get to the elephant in the room. 
Like Adidas, Nike is a massive global sports brand. Is there anyone on the planet who doesn't recognize this logo? Certainly no one watching this video, I'm sure. Their size and scope make them an easy candidate for the NHL deal. Plus, they do have a prior relationship with the league. Remember, they supplied jerseys for a handful of teams in the late 90s, and even Wayne Gretzky's Edmonton Oilers in the mid to late 80s. ESPN reported that Adidas has been paying the league at least $70 million a year for the privilege to make and sell jerseys. As big as that number is, it would seem like a drop in the bucket among Nike's billions in annual revenue. And that's exactly what worries me. Hockey would not be a priority for them. And we've kind of seen that in the Olympics. Nike's been making the uniforms for Olympic hockey since at least 1998, and almost all of them have been dull and disappointing designs. My one reason for hope with Nike is the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. Those jerseys stand out in the history of international hockey as some of the most creative and brilliant designs ever. The Czech and Finnish jerseys based on their national flags are just gorgeous. Even the Russian design was amazingly cool, and I loved all the little touches, like the embossed effects on the shoulders for many teams. All the gold maple leaves on the inside of the Canadian collar, so the players are reminded of the successes that came before them. And the words to the Slovak national anthem embedded in these pinstripes. All very cool. Still. I don't love the construction of Nike hockey jerseys. The layout is ugly, the material is weird and uncomfortable, but that may be moot. If they are going for the NHL contract, I imagine they'll take the opportunity to develop an entirely new jersey and uniform system just like Adidas and Reebok before them. In fact, I think that'll be the case for whoever comes in, which I think is why the NHL set up a two-year runway, to allow plenty of time for research, development, and production. Bauer deserves a quick mention. This was a brand purchased by Nike in 95 and later sold off in 08. But of course, Bauer continues to make high-end hockey equipment to this day. And don't forget that while under Nike, they did outfit the Nashville Predators for their inaugural season. So they have some history with NHL jerseys. And more recently, they've been outfitting college hockey teams, including the University of New Hampshire. Now, given all the R&D work they've done around hockey, I'd imagine they could figure out how to do a solid uniform system if they really wanted to. But I'm not sure they'd have the money the NHL would be looking for. CCM. This is the obvious pick for a lot of fans. There is a lot of history here, and therefore a lot of nostalgia. They started outfitting NHL teams at least 40 years ago, and they have a long, crazy history of their own, but they've never stopped being the ultimate hockey company. Now back to where we left off with CCM. As I said, they were purchased in 2004 by Reebok, who inherited their NHL contract. When Adidas bought Reebok in 2005, CCM was along for the ride there too. But in 2017, just as the Adi Zero jerseys were hitting the ice, Adidas sold CCM to a private equity firm. The company continues to produce top-tier hockey equipment, but even more relevant is that since 2018, they've been the official jersey provider of the American Hockey League, the top development league of the NHL, as well as the three Canadian major junior leagues. The jersey brand is CCM Quicklight, and it's used by at least 92 teams across North America, so that is no small feat. They have a strong hockey heritage, and they have remained relevant across the hockey world. But do they have the bank account to make another NHL bid? We'll just have to wait and see. While we're talking minor league contracts, let's consider the ECHL. Athletic Knit has been their exclusive jersey provider since 2019. They make a good quality sweater, and I know from personal experience that they have talented designers on staff. Now, are they ready to make the big leap into the NHL? Hard to say, but money is likely to be a major concern. OT Sports and Exclusive Pro handle a lot of ECHL theme nights. There are way too many for Athletic Knit to be able to take care of them all. Both companies are very small, but they're in the industry, so I wanted to give them a mention. OT Sports seems to be the go-to for youth teams around the U.S. in just about every sport, but they also supply some pro and semi-pro leagues. Exclusive Pro Sports is known primarily for its customization capabilities. Not only do they handle jersey numbering and lettering for a bunch of NHL teams, they also specialize in sublimated jerseys. Not something we'd want to see in the NHL, though. I doubt either of these companies is really in the hunt for the NHL contract, so who else could be? Under Armour is another international powerhouse in performance sports apparel, but their footprint in hockey is rather limited at the moment. You're more likely to see their logo on base layers and workout gear. 
For them to jump into the NHL right now would probably take a big financial commitment, not just in terms of paying the league, but also in development of a jersey. That said, if it all comes down to the bottom line, they probably could swing it. New Balance is mainly known for shoes, but they have branched out into other sportswear over the years, including hockey, where they're building up their college portfolio. The New England-based company has long-term deals with Boston College and the University of Maine. The more familiar brand to hockey fans is probably Warrior, which New Balance bought in 2004. Warrior started in lacrosse, but has assembled an impressive range of hockey equipment. You see their name all over sticks, pants, helmets, gloves, and more. And in Europe, they're already in the jersey business, so it wouldn't shock me to see Warrior make a run at the NHL too. And under New Balance, they might have the money to make it happen. True Hockey is another remote possibility. This is the smaller outfit that's been popping up in the NHL with skates and goalie gear. We have seen a lot of true setups on goalies lately, but are they in a place to add jerseys into the mix? I'm not sure I'd bet on that just yet. Last one here, Puma is another big German sports brand just like Adidas. To my knowledge, they've never shown much interest in hockey, that is until they signed Leon Dreisaitl as a brand ambassador in 2021. Does that mean they're interested in the NHL at large? I don't know, maybe. But based on their annual revenue, they certainly seem to have the money for a seat at the table. So there it is, that's about everyone I could think of who could possibly be in the mix. Granted, most of them are super long shots. As far as frontrunners go, I'm loath to say that Nike is probably up there, just given their behemoth status. CCM and Bauer are probably dark horse candidates, big in hockey, but smaller in the wallet. And who knows, maybe Under Armour or Warrior could make a showing. As always, I'll keep you updated if I hear anything promising. For now, though, take a moment to subscribe to the Aesthetics channel if you haven't yet, and maybe consider supporting my work with a super thanks. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.